when I was in my second year as a Jesuit, I was sent to Kingston, Jamaica, to work with the Missionaries of Charity, uh, about whom I knew very little other than they were the religious order founded by Mother Teresa. Uh, and so I was asked to work with the Missionaries of Charity, who, like in a lot of their other places, uh, care for the sick and the dying. They bring them right off the streets, they fed them, uh, they bathed them, uh, they gave them a place to sleep, and it was very beautiful. Now, the Missionaries of Charity were always very joyful, uh, which I thought, well, initially that must be some sort of dodge or that seems fake. But ultimately, I realized that they really were joyful about what they were doing. And that got me interested in reading about their founders because they would always talk about how mother says this, mother says that. Uh, mother Teresa was born Agnes Bochachu in 1910. She entered the Loretto Sisters in Ireland uh, and was sent to India to work with the poor. Um, and she worked in a fairly poor neighborhood teaching young girls. At one point, she was very tired. She was sort of suffering from exhaustion. And uh, she took a trip to Darjeeling on a train ride. So she's in India. And after her uh, papers were opened at the end of her life, it was discovered that she had enjoyed uh, what spiritual writers call elocution. She actually heard Jesus' words, inviting her to work with the poorest of the poor. Shortly before that, Mother Teresa had said in prayer that she would never refuse Christ anything he asked her. Which I always say, you know, shows you be careful what you pray for because you might get it. So Mother Teresa gets this uh, sense in prayer that she's been called to work with the poorest of the poor, which involves not only leaving her school, but leaving the Loretta Order because, you know, they were sort of set up to teach the girls there in Calcutta, and she leaves. And she said it was one of the hardest things she's ever had to do. So she gives up her work in the school, and she basically starts working with uh, street people. Uh, bringing them in, caring for them, uh, and uh, basically finding great difficulty uh, in starting out um, and getting approval for these kinds of things. But she's filled with this great sense of consolation, this great sense of God's presence that enables her to do this kind of work. Eventually, the, the Indian government and the state sees what she's doing and gives her permission. There's a beautiful story where early on, she sets up a place in Calcutta uh, next to a Hindu temple. And of course, you know, the people were not happy to have this Catholic woman, this unknown Catholic woman coming in and, you know, just sort of setting up shop. So there's a mob that gathers out in front of uh, her place, and she comes out and she invites the leader of the mob in to see what they're doing. And of course, they're taking care of all these poor people. The leader of the mob goes out and says, we will close her place if all of your mothers and sisters agree to do what she's doing for our people, which kind of cements her uh, her sort of love uh, by the people, and she sort of becomes, you know, adopted by Calcutta and by all of India. So Mother Teresa, I think, is probably the best known uh, sort of contemporary saint. People called her a living saint even when she was alive. But I think there's a very unusual part of Mother Teresa's life that is not very well known, and that is after the train ride, um, after this train ride to Jarjeeling when she felt very close to God, she had this great spiritual darkness that lasted, some say, for the rest of her life. To her spiritual director, she wrote, In my soul, I feel that terrible pain of loss, of God not wanting me, of God not being God, of God not existing. With time, she started to understand, with the help of her spiritual director, that these feelings of abandonment were one way of identifying with the figure of Christ on the cross and the abandoned poor. And so she transformed that darkness into a way of serving others. And isn't that the way it is in our lives a lot? We have this very intense experience of God, this very intense spiritual experience that sometimes leaves us. And it's the part of faith that we really have to um, live out. Uh, it's not as if we're always feeling close to God, and Mother Teresa wasn't feeling close to God either every day. And I think her life is a lot more like our lives than we think uh, that it was. You know, that work that uh, the Missionaries of Charity do, uh, and that I was helping to do, um, which was, my work was bathing old men and clipping their toenails, is, you know, can be very physically difficult to do, and I found it difficult to do. But it was wonderful for me to see the way that they approached each person, uh, not as just another sick person, but as someone who was beautiful, someone who deserved the dignity 
that God gives us all. And Mother Teresa has this wonderful expression where she says, it's important to meet Christ in his most distressing disguise. So not just Christ in a beautiful cathedral when the priest holds up the Eucharist and the organ is uh, playing and everybody's singing, it's easy to find Christ in there. Or when you're holding a, a newborn baby or when you're looking at a sunset. But when you're looking at a poor, uh, dirty, smelly street person who's dying of throat cancer, that's one man I took care of. And to be able to see Christ in that person, I think is very beautiful. And I think in that way, Mother Teresa gives us all a gift because she reminds us that it's not just finding God in the beautiful, but it's also finding God in his distressing disguise. I don't want to paint Mother Teresa as a sort of super pious, um, unreal person. Mother Teresa was a very tough person. She had to, first of all, found a religious order. She had to run a religious order. And eventually, she had to raise a lot of money. There's a great story about um, people giving Mother Teresa money. And I think this would warm the hearts of fundraisers everywhere, that her primary uh, response when people would give her money is not enough. You know, so here's a woman who sort of knew how to use power. Um, when she would go to uh, different cities, um, she would go right to the mayor or the, or the governor of a state and say, I would like to have uh, a place for the homeless in your town. And she knew that no one could resist Mother Teresa. Uh, there's also a great story uh, in her journals. She writes to a group of her sisters saying, who are basically complaining about the long hours, saying, hey, look, you know, you take these long hours and live in the name of the poor, and I do a lot more work than you do, so stop complaining. So this is not a sort of... Uh, kind of pasteboard saint. This is a really strong woman um, who knew what she wanted, but at the same time was able to marry that with this great devotion to the poor because she knew who she was doing it for. Mother Teresa, uh, when people would come to see her in Calcutta to sort of become like her, you know, she would have a lot of them stay and work with the poor, but she'd also say to people, find your own Calcutta. Where are you called uh, to find Christ in distressing disguise? It might be in your family. It might be in your workplace. It might be in your neighborhood. So it's not as if all of us have to become Mother Teresa, because I think when we think that we have to become another person, we're ignoring the beauty of the person that God has already created and the unique vocation that we all have. So I think it's really important to see that Mother Teresa's life uh, is a real shining beacon uh, to a lot of people who might find it difficult uh, to persist in the light of a lot of spiritual darkness or confusion, but also a real inspiration that all of us are called to be saints in our own way. Mother Teresa says to us, it's okay to doubt. It's okay to feel separated from God. But she also shows us that the part of faith is continuing on with the Christian call and continuing on with our work, no matter how difficult or how separated from God that we might feel. It's a hard message, but I think it's ultimately a very inspiring one for Mother Teresa. Together, we will do something beautiful for God.